Here we are. It's me, John Park, and we're live with John Park's workshop. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, I think we've even got YouTube under control. Uh, we're we're uh, uh, dealing with some new ways of, of launching it or some new old ways of launching it. But I think we've got it going. So that's great. Uh, and thank you, everyone, in the YouTube chat, uh, as well as our Discord chat for uh, popping in and, and uh, checking things out. Let's see. It says the main li live link was showing show and tell. Uh, and it still didn't switch over until you hit reload. Wild. Oh, thanks, Jepler. Uh, I appreciate you checking it out. Uh, all right. Well, let's see. What have we got uh, in store today? Uh, I believe I, uh, I, I managed to turn off some layers of things. Let's see. How about that? Hey, look, that logo. I knew something was looking weird to me. Let's, uh, let's bring that logo back. All right. Uh, so... Not super hot in Southern California today, moderate, so I don't have air conditioning noise to contend with, which is nice. Uh, but I was actually talking with C. Grover after the show last time about maybe uh, getting myself a, uh, an outboard equalizer to try to tweak out some of those, uh, those higher, uh, higher frequency pitches that I was getting from the AC. Oh, but someone next door has a circular saw going, so that's fun, hey? <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's see what, it, what do we have in store for today? Uh, first thing I want to do is mention our job board. It is the Adafruit job board and it is at jobs.adafruit.com. Head on over there and, uh, you'll see things like these. These are, uh, some of the job openings that have been posted and it is entirely free if you have a job that you want to post for. If you're looking to hire someone to do some contract work, full-time work, uh, part-time, uh, on-site, off-site, remote, all of those are possible. All of those are free for you to register and post your position as well as, uh, excuse me, free to look for jobs. And it's also free to post your resume up there as well in case you want someone to find you. Uh, so that is the Adafruit job board. Please, I encourage you to go check it out. And uh, let's see, what else do we, we have in store here? Um, I want to mention the Adafruit Daily uh, Make Code newsletter is out. It went out uh, this Tuesday, and we're doing that as a monthly. So uh, you can sign up now if you want to get next month's uh, edition. If you head on over, let's, let's go check it out, in fact. I'm going to go to Make Code. No, it's Adafruit Daily. Adafruit Daily.com. Let's head over there. Uh, and I'll bring that window up so you can see it. 
That is the Adafruit Daily website. You can head there and you can sign up for any of the newsletters in any of these subject areas. They're entirely free. You can cancel at any time. We won't spam you. We promise. Uh, all you need to do is enter in an email and you'll get that uh, anytime a new Adafruit Daily comes out. Um, we have things like uh, new products. We have the Make Code newsletter I mentioned. We have a weekly circuit Python or Python on hardware, Python for microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, so there's loads of great stuff that you can uh, get in your mailbox and then read through your news. Um, I just saw a question over in YouTube from Chris Young. Hey, Chris, uh, asking if we're going to have a show and tell after this. And yes, we are. So uh, we had the big one hour long show and tell last night. And now we'll, I'll be doing a half hour uh, show and tell today, a little bit after this show. This show uh, ends around uh, 1.45 ish, and then uh, my time, Pacific time, and then at uh, 2.30 uh, Pacific time or 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, we'll do a show and tell, a half hour show and tell. So please stop by for that. Uh, in fact, thank you for reminding me, Chris. There's a little graphic that makes it easier, uh, easier to, to process, perhaps. And um, Cedar Grove mentioned that in the Discord chat, uh, you can type in question mark showtimes and a little bot will show you the list of showtimes. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm not sure which all shows are, are in there. We have to keep that updated as things are moving and, and changing. We've got so many shows and tells now. We've got one uh, that the Ruiz brothers are doing after their 3D printing hangout. Uh, we have the hour-long one on Wednesday. Uh, Katney and I have been... Uh, swapping back and forth, hosting uh, the one after my show on Thursdays. So there's a lot of opportunities to show your stuff and really great stuff. We saw some really fun, uh, impressive and, and fun projects last night. So go, go back on our YouTube archive and check out last night's show and tell for some really great stuff. Uh, all right, so let's see what else. Um, I will also mention I'm doing a new show. I've done three episodes now. It's a weekly show. It's on uh, Tuesday uh, at noon Pacific time, uh, three o'clock East Coast time. And it is a hour long make code live on the Microsoft Mixer make code channel. And I do a full build of a project from scratch on there. So if you like the uh, make code minute, but you always thought this is too short, I want more depth, I want to see a, a more of the evolution of a project rather than the highlights of it, uh, then you may enjoy that. That is the, uh, the Make Code Live. I do that every Tuesday. And there is a lot of great programming that the Microsoft Make Code team has been doing. So a lot of the members of the team have been doing daily and sometimes multiple, uh, multiple times a day uh, live streams of coding in everything from the Minecraft with Make Code to uh, Microbit to Circuit Playground Express, Arcade. So there's a, a wide variety of content there for uh, many different levels. There's beginner through to expert level content on there. So go check it out. Uh, all right. What else have we got? Uh, I think this is a good time to do a product pick of the week. And so my product pick of the week this week is actually going to appear in my uh, project demo later. And it is the, oh, I've, I've got the name wrong on there. Hold on. Let me change that. Stand by. We are, we are really super live. Prop maker. Feather wing. That is the prop maker feather wing. Uh, and it is a feather wing. It's an add on board that'll go onto pretty much any of the microcontrollers in the feather ecosystem. Has that pin out, fits on top. Uh, and what the prop maker feather wing, it's, it's really great for things like lightsabers and ray guns and props, uh, hence the name. But really, it's a way to fairly inexpensively add on. Uh, things like a, a high wattage LED driver, high wattage RGB LED driver, as well as a JST NeoPixel out, uh, a small amplifier and speaker out that you can plug right into. Uh, what else do we have on there? An accelerometer with tap detection and shake detection, as well as normal accelerometer-y stuff. Uh, and I'm probably missing a couple things too. In fact, let's check out, this is the, uh, the product page for the prop maker feather wing. You can see it's $9.95. I think we have one that's $10.95 uh, if you want to get it pre-soldered. Um, and what else? It's, it's got the snap-in NeoPixel port, the 3-watt RGB LED driver, Class D audio amplifier, 
Uh, it has a low power mode as well, so that it can uh, you can carry your prop around for a long time without uh, burning out battery. Uh, and I'm going to be showing it off a little later, particularly because I, I find it really convenient to have a little speaker out and amplifier built onto there without sort of a breakout daughter card extra board off to the side and wiring. Um, but I'm also using the accelerometer. So that's my uh, product pick of the week. And you can, uh, I would say, you can start buying things on Adafruit again. We've begun shipping. Uh, but in this case, this, this one happens to be out of stock. However, if you click on this buy on DigiKey button, it'll take you over to DigiKey's site where you can buy it. It looks like they have it in stock. I don't even see a number on that. So I assume that means there's just plenty. Uh, so go check that out. I think this would say back order or something like that if we're out of stock. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a second way that you can get it. If you see that Adafruit doesn't have it in stock, go check our good friends uh, up there in uh, Minnesota and see if you can hit the red buy on DigiKey button and pick up yourself a, uh, a prop maker feather wing. All right, uh, let's see. I think for um, my gear report this week, let's pop over to a cool new, my cool icon logo there. Uh, the gear report this week, I found something on the side of the road when I was walking the dogs. My wife and I were walking the dogs, uh, and there was a little box of stuff out there. Uh, and of course, I always look, look at things like that to see what we can find. And I found a brand new in-box. Uh, in fact, let me, let me pop over to this uh, down shooter camera here. This little item here, it is an electronic digital outdoor electronic digital timer. Uh, ideal for holiday lighting and security lighting. I haven't even opened it yet. Let's see. Let's see what we get here. Uh, so it's a self-contained, I'm assuming UL listed. Uh, I don't see UL listed listed on there, so maybe it isn't. Maybe it is. Oh yeah, there it is. It's a UL listed, uh, meaning it's probably safe. Uh, and it's a, a grounded three-prong 120 volt. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the current rating is on it. It's probably listed here. And uh, it's got some sort of uh, a couple modes, I think, for um, enabling either a dimmer based on this little photo cell that's right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and you can also do some settings for, for timing on it. So I haven't even checked that out yet, but that's a, a pretty cool find. I, uh, again, I say it's probably meant for holiday lights. Uh, is, uh, and, and security, they say. Um, but I think that's going to be fun to play around with, and I may even uh, avoid the warranty and crack it open and have a look at, at what's inside. But I love these kinds of uh, relays or solid-state relays uh, that you can safely deal with high-voltage AC uh, using something like a small uh, microcontroller, which is probably how this one runs here. Uh, so anyway, that's my gear report. Just a cool find. Uh, and one of the reasons that I encourage everyone to uh, poke around in dumpsters and things like that, or look at uh, tossed out boxes, because you never know what you're going to find. Uh, so that is my gear report for the week. Uh, and that's right, it is a live unboxing. Wolf220 in Discord says, let, let me pop up my Discord here. Um, yeah, Andy Calloway, the things people throw away. I don't know why, um, but you know, sometimes people can't go to the effort of, of uh, handing something off to someone. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I've got that to play around with and also that it's not headed to the landfill. So uh, there you go. All right, uh, let's see. Next up, let's uh, do the Make Code Minute. All right, let me bring up my Chrome browser and put me off to the side here. Okay, so this is a, a little bit of a change. For the Make Code Minute today, I wanted to look at, for the very first time, for me, the makecodemindstorms.com. Makecode.mindstorms.com. This is a, uh, another, yet another version of Make Code that is designed for the Lego Mindstorms. Uh, 
So Mindstorms have gone through various evolutions, and this is the latest. It's called the EV3. It's a microcontroller with lots of uh, interconnects for using different kinds of sensors and inputs and motor drivers, outputs. Uh, it also has a little screen on it and some interface elements, these little buttons. And what I've built here uh, shows how you would plug in a couple of color sensors and drive four different motors with those color sensors depending on what they see. So in this case, when I press the red, you'll see that first motor uh, heads in a forward direction at 50% uh, speed. If I see a blue, that second motor goes backwards at 100% speed. And then I've got the similar thing happening over here on the right. So this would be something like, uh, you might use this for some sort of object sorting or for a uh, object recognition or line following robot that does different things depending on, on the colors of, of objects that it, uh, that it sees. And I wanted to show you how uh, straightforward this is. I, I, I've never looked at this before. I just popped it open and, uh, and saw immediately, okay, here's some sensors. These act like uh, inputs. And then we can do things like uh, on a color sensor input, we can say which input we've plugged into and what color we're detecting. Uh, you'll even see I'm, I'm showing little um, messages on the screen there. They're hard to see, but you'll see little uh, LCD messages popping up saying what color we've seen. Uh, you won't hear these, but I actually have it playing sound effects. I think this uses uh, WAV files or something similar to that that are um, uploaded when you upload the, the code, I'm assuming, onto the, to the EV3. Uh, so it'll play a little. I had it playing little cool servo sounds to add to the uh, robot-y feel of it. And then uh, using these motors uh, blocks, I have a block here that says ramp a large motor, and I've got it plugged into the B port in this case. Uh, and it's going backwards. I've told it to go negative 100%, and then for, for a certain amount of time, I say 1,000 milliseconds. Uh, and so essentially it's a repetition of that four times to use uh, the four different color choices or two choices per sensor and the four motors. And that is how easy it is to start programming a LEGO Mindstorm EV3. I don't have one yet, but I'm now thinking about getting one because this looks like a really fun way to do some robotics. And that is your Make Code Minute. Uh, all right, so let's see. What should we do next? Uh, before I forget, because I know I, uh, I moved on really quickly last week into, into the bulk of the rest of the show and totally forgot... Uh, the game of the week. So I think it's because I reordered some things and so I, I, I didn't even see it. But there, that's my reminder. I would like to show you uh, my Make Code Arcade game pick of the week. And my pick of the week this week, I found it over on the arcade uh, channel of the Make Code uh, forum, and that's at forum.makecode.com. And this one has a, a nice story behind it. This is, let me, let me uh, zoom this up a bit so you can see it a little better. Uh, the post said, Furry, my favorite jump and run. And this is by a user named Napomex. And they say, hello, six years ago, I got a game Buino via Kickstarter. And uh, here was the starting point for me to extend my programming knowledge, which I've collected at the 3D printer. Unfortunately, the project failed due to time constraints and performance and resolution of the game Buino was not quite sufficient. Seven weeks ago, I stumbled over Maker Code, uh, Make Code while Googling and immediately started to revive the project, which I had been working on for six years. A kitten bot was also ordered to test on the hardware. I'd like to introduce the project now as an early alpha as I'm at the point where the questions pile up. I hope you can support me in the further course of the project. And uh, the project gives a small remake of the original game called Furry. It's a jump and run from Fallen Angel Industries, which I played till I dropped in my childhood. Uh, there are a couple of versions that uh, Napomex has posted here, as well as some sort of um, project log of issues and uh, features as they're being added, questions. So it's, it's really nice to see. This is a good place on the Microsoft uh, MakeCode forum to engage in solving and, and, uh, and helping collaborate on building games. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the uh, terrific progress so far. I'm going to open up my uh, simulator in the MakeCode editor here to full screen. 
And I think this was, uh, there we go, it's, it's reloaded now. And uh, here you can see adorable little character. It says, furry, move with the left and right buttons. And I'll press the space bar to advance. That's the same as hitting A. Crouch with the down button. Jump with the A button. And shoot with the B button. And I know this is not going to play at full frame rate for you on this video, but hopefully you can see some of the really cute animation of the character here. This is... Uh, the beginnings of having some level design as well as the little backgrounds there, scrolling parallax. Here's a bad guy I'm going to have to avoid. Uh, there's a gun here. If you press B, I don't think I'm able to, to blow away these, uh, whoa, these bad guys, but I can make them explode if I hit them, which is probably not good for my health. Uh, so this is really lovely. And I think uh, for a lot of users, as you're getting, uh, getting to know Make Code Arcade, it's a really... Um, excellent way to flex your skills and learn a lot by copying a game that you've already seen before so that you have uh, art direction and things like that already designed that you can try to emulate. Oh, I've unlocked the, ne the next level here. Uh, so this is uh, my game pick of the week. It is Furry, my favorite jump and run, by the user Napomex. So please do go check it out. All right, uh, let's see. I'm going to pop up my, my Discord to see if there's any questions there. Um, oh, some discussion. Good. I'm glad to see there's more discussion about the finding stuff, rescuing things in bins. Uh, Andy Calloway got carbon filament light bulbs. Wow. Very cool. Uh, yeah, Wolf220 says about the, um, the Lego EV3. Uh, I have some Mindstorm, some of like the first generation stuff, so I haven't used it uh, since they've, they've uh, made some evolutions, probably 15, 20 years now they've been evolving the, the Mindstorm, so I'm really curious to see what, uh, what the modern system is like uh, and also what, what coding uh, is, is like with it. I assume in this case it's, it's got the USB connection and you can just push code right from make code to it, but it's probably got a slew of other, uh, other languages and things you can use with it, which is really neat. All right, uh, let's see. So now, what have we got next? Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, a couple things. So one I wanted to show off in a little more detail. In fact, I'm going to switch back over to my workbench. Uh, I wanted to show in a little more detail my uh, yoga pose timer. So we started working on this last week, and I'm going to zoom this camera here a bit. And I showed this, uh, did I show this? No, I don't think I showed this last night. I, I, I posted on Instagram and, uh, and Twitter a little demo video of this. Uh, so... This is my yoga pose timer, and the way it's working now is I have the clue plugged into the dragon tail, and then I have a little um, a MOSFET transistor circuit that allows me to use about 6 volts coming from some AA batteries to power a solenoid. And the solenoid is to strike this metal bowl. And one of the challenges with these kinds of projects is how are you going to actually place the solenoid so that it can ding the bell without dampening it. You don't want it touching this, so it can't really be connected to it. Um, and I didn't want to build an elaborate stand for it or, or design an object for 3D printing or, or other fabrication, so I really wanted to use the parts at hand. And so this is what I came up with. This is my battery pack and my breadboard are sort of acting as the uh, body of the of the uh, project. And so these breadboards come actually with a um, double stick foam tape backing. And so I just peeled off the, the cover and was able to just stick it right onto the battery pack. Uh, and in fact, I can still open the battery pack to change out the batteries, which is good. And then I placed rubber uh, feet at the bottoms of both of those pieces so that it won't slide. Uh, and then I used some more little double stick foam tape to connect my solenoid to the back of the battery pack at 
a height that will strike the bowl. You can see there when this is sitting on its little um, pillow that it sits on. So when I place these here, and let's see if I can switch cameras real quick. Uh, you'll see, it's, I know it's a little far away. You'll see I've just got a USB powering the, uh, the clue right now. Um, and I've used different batteries here. I think I, I, uh, ideal would be maybe a um, 500 milliamp hour lithium or a, a thousand milliamp hour lithium battery, something like that would be nice. Uh, or maybe even a double A or triple A pack, uh, an additional one. And one of the reasons is I like having the extra weight here because it keeps things from moving around when the solenoid triggers. So the way this works right now is that I actually am using, um, in fact, I'll switch, let me switch back for a moment. I'm using the proximity sensor that's right at the very top of the, of the clue there. There's a small proximity sensor uh, and so I have different uh, yoga pose icons here that I got from a free Creative Commons uh, SVG and PNG site, and I just formatted them for the screen here. And so when I hover over, you probably just heard a little click, and right now it's waiting 10 seconds, and then it'll click again, so double click, you can watch the solenoid. Okay, so that then will go to the next pose, and right now, I just uh, this would be something you would have right near your yoga mat, and each time you're ready, you can just pass your hand in front of it and start the next pose. So I didn't want to use the buttons because that seemed a little uh, fiddly and clicky and meant that I might move things out of, out of the way. Uh, so, so now we'll show you the proper demo from the backside here. Uh, let's switch to that camera again. And I'll try to at least move this closer into view. So hopefully you'll be able to see, uh, all I do is set these next to each other. So there's no, uh, nothing to, to bind them together, just gravity. Uh, so now I'll hover my hand in front, it dings the timer. Uh, and again, the nice thing here is that the bowl is just resting on this pillow. So it vibrates a little, it actually moves a little when it gets struck. Uh, and you can see that they, um, th this one wiggled a little bit in this case, partly it's because of my USB cable is, is helping it get pulled this way. And that's why I like having a little extra weight with the battery. If necessary, we could add a little um, base plate of some kind that goes under the pillow and, and holds it better in place. But I found that with, with the full battery pack that I had on here, um, the weight of it is enough. So that uh, was my solution to trying to make it as uh, simple as possible to build this without doing much fabrication. It's just some assembly of, of the, uh, the parts that make up the thing. You could, if you wanted to, I happen to have some of this sort of uh, velvet fabric here. You could do some things to cover up a lot of the, oh, my camera just went, <laughs> that camera just uh, overheated. Oh no, let me, uh, let me switch back to here while I talk. I'll turn that camera off, uh, let it cool off. Yeah, I need to point a little fan at it, I think. Darn that camera. Uh, so the other, the other idea I had was using something like a uh, small wood box. I like building projects into these sort of attractive little boxes that you can get at a hobby store. So something like that might be a nice way to hide things and just have the, the clue poking up from the top so that you can uh, see the screen and use the, the little sensor, but then have the, uh, a little space for the solenoid right here on the side. Uh, so that I'll leave as an exercise to the, to the user, but I'm gonna uh, write up the guide on the basics here as well as the software. And I have a couple small tweaks to the software I'd like to make, including um, a looping or, or go ahead mode so you can set all 10 or 30 or however many poses you wanna do and have it automatically run without user interaction. Uh, so that's my update on, on the yoga timer. Uh, and now I want to talk about the new project. So if you look right here, uh, this is the Feather M4 with the prop maker feather wing on top. And I have a little uh, speaker plugged into there. I think it's a three ohm speaker. Uh, and an interesting thing about these speakers is these are made to go in things like laptops and tablets. And so they use the case as a soundboard usually. So uh, there's a little peel off adhesive here and you'll usually stick this on the inside of, of part of the lid of, of the product. Um, and so for, for my 
use. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll show this more next week. I have a sort of puppet I'm gonna put this into, but I think I'm gonna end up mounting this either to the feather or to a small piece of uh, wood or plastic that'll go in so that we get that soundboard effect. Um, so let's take a look at um, some code here and let's, uh, let's see, how can I arrange things? I want Adam maybe there. And a down shooter maybe there. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'll, I'll give this power. And that's actually not the, the current version of the code. So ignore that for a moment. But I'm going to give the Feather USB power. And the way this is working, I'm actually using tap detection. So I'm going to double tap this. And we'll, um, I'm going to take my microphone and set it closer to that so you can hear well. Okay, so that is the creepy puppet dialogue, some of the creepy puppet dialogue. That'll make more sense probably next week when I, when I have the creepy puppet in hand. Um, but let's pop open Moo. Uh, and I'm going to load up the code.py. Yeah, let me load Moo instead of uh, Adam here. Let's see if I can switch. There we go. Uh, and I'll zoom in a whole bunch so that's easier for you to see and me without my glasses even. Uh, so here we have, uh, it's a big setup, but what's going on here? We have native MP3 playback happening in CircuitPython now. Uh, what does that mean? That means that we're not using an extra chip. In the past, we've had MP3 playback happening on uh, a Featherwing or an Arduino shield, if you go back a few years further. I think the Music Maker Featherwing might have been MP3. It might have been Wave, I can't remember. Uh, but on, on, the, uh, on the Music Maker Featherwing, we had a separate chip, the VL15 something or other. I can't remember the name. Maybe someone in the chat will remember it. Uh, that was handling decoding the MP3 file in real time uh, because that takes some horsepower to do. Well, the cool thing is that now with the power of things like the M4 chips and the NRF52 840s that we have on uh, a bunch of our different microcontroller boards, the, uh, the speed is there. So we can actually real time decode MP3, which is a compressed audio format. Um, the reason that's a big deal is size, partly. If you look at the compression in an MP3 file, it makes it a lot smaller than an equivalent uh, quality and length of WAV file, which is essentially uncompressed. So WAVs have been easier for us in the past to, to play back right off of the, the memory because there's, uh, it's direct. There's not, not uh, a lot of math going on to decompress that file or, or decode that file. Uh, so what we have now happening inside of it's built into the audio um, libraries inside of CircuitPython is this audio MP3 library. So if you look at my code here, uh, I'm bringing in time because I'm doing some pauses, uh, bringing in the board so we can talk to the different uh, ins and outs, uh, the bus IO so we can use uh, I squared C to deal with the accelerometer that's built into the prop maker feather wing. And uh, then digital IO, we're actually using this, there's an enable pin that enables and disables the amplifier uh, when we want to use it. And I actually found a, a very nice use for that uh, that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we're bringing in audio uh, input output, audio MP3, and this is the accelerometer library. Uh, there's also an audio mixer, and there's, a, there's another demo. I'll probably show it next week. There's a demo that um, Jepler, our very own Jepler, made, which allows us to play two MP3 simultaneously. So the mixer allows you to have like a background song and then sound effects on top of it, which is really impressive uh, that that's all happening in real time in CircuitPython. Uh, so the next thing I'm doing is some, uh, this is some of the basic setup for using the onboard accelerometer. We set the I squared C bus. Uh, we set the interrupt pin, uh, I'm instantiating the accelerometer, uh, and then I'm setting this Excel set tap. And what this calls is I'm 
setting up for double taps rather than single. If you just touch it once, it's not going to do anything. It has to be a, a double tap within sort of a, I don't know what the, the threshold of timing is, but tap tap is kind of what I'm doing and it works. Uh, and then we have a 0 to 127 uh, threshold for what's considered a tap. And my idea is I'm going to place the board, battery, and speaker inside of this puppet so I can just tap it with a finger to make it uh, trigger one of the sound effects. Um, and then I'm enabling, uh, I'm setting this variable called enable, which is the pin that I'm using to uh, enable or disable the amplifier on this board. Uh, setting that to an output, and I'm actually setting it at false at first. And then the last thing I'm doing here in the setup is I'm setting the speaker as the board A0. We actually have two uh, analog outs on the Feather M4, so you could do stereo if you if you wanted to set it up that way, but uh, I'm just going up board A0, so I'm using mono, uh, monophonic files. Uh, and then this is a numbering, I'm using an interval uh, of, of the number of uh, wave, or sorry, MP3 files that I put on here, and I just named them sequentially so that they're easy to, uh, to call in a loop. So inside of if true here, all I'm doing is checking for the accelerometer to be tapped. And remember, I set that threshold to be a double tap at, I think, 80. Uh, for my own debugging, I, you can see here, it'll, it'll print out, uh, if I scroll way down. You know what, I'm going to unplug my camera switcher so it doesn't conflict with the serial port there. Let's reopen this. Okay, so it tells me that it tapped. It tells me the file name that it's playing. Uh, and here's where I'm enabling the speaker. And the reason I did this is I found that after playing something, a few seconds after it had played, if I didn't do anything else, I would hear a sort of high-pitched descent pew sound as the, uh, I'm guessing, a capacitor discharged in the amplifier circuit. So by using the enable and disable pin, I, we don't end up hearing that. We, we end up... Uh, essentially shutting off our, our speaker uh, so we don't have to hear that. Uh, we could also probably use the mixer and set the volume level. There's a level in the mixer. Um, then I have a little bit of um, a variable here I'm setting up, which is the name of the path to and the name of my MP3 file. So uh, I'll tell more of this story next week, but there's this puppet uh, that's a sort of weird, creepy sloth. His name is Lars. And so I've got a directory called Lars, and I've got a, uh, a set of MP3s that are called Lars underscore 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, on, and so on through to 8, .mp3. Uh, so that is then why it's printing out the name here in, in the full name, and it's also how I am loading that MP3 stream. So MP3 stream is the audio MP3 MP3 decoder open call. So it's opening up a file, which we saw what the name is there. That's the first one that it opens. Uh, and then we tell the speaker to play. It plays through the full MP3. Um, actually, Jepler, we could ask Jepler because I think he's in the chat. What is this about? This while speaker playing time, sleep, and then a tenth of a second. Why is that there? I, I had that question. So maybe you can let us, excuse me, let us know in the, uh, in the Discord chat. Uh, and then I am using this sample number, which was initially zero, to just cycle through the zero through nine, uh, or zero through eight that I have here. So I'm, I'm just adding one to that number, and then uh, doing this modulo function, modulo eight, which means as the number gets bigger and bigger, we always just loop back through the, the small set that we have. Uh, and here's where I'm turning off that, uh, disconnecting that speaker. Uh, down here was just some test code where I was running it through all of them, so it just looped through and, and played all of them. Uh, but I'll, I'll ignore that now. And uh, instead you can see if I get this moo out of the way, and I'll hold the speaker, that'll, that'll make it louder. Hmm. Yeah, the mystery, uh, the plot thickens here, but I'll, I'll explain more next week, I promise. Um, so I mentioned, let me go full screen here. Uh, actually, I'll hold it down here. I mentioned before um, some really nice features about using this prop maker Featherwing is that we can plug in, we, we sell this little um, three ohm speaker that has a little tiny, tiny JST connector, two pin that plugs right into here. Uh, 
accelerometer built on that I'm using. You could also use the tilt function or the shake function, but I found tap to be the right one for me. And there you can see I'm using some of our low profile feather headers, uh, male and female, on the Feather M4, which makes it pretty compact. I think I can still fit in uh, one of our small batteries. We have a, I think it's a 400 milliamp hour battery that fits between uh, feathers. And, and you can cheat a little bit. You can raise that up and the connections are still good if you need to fit that battery in there. But I want it to be pretty low profile. Uh, and then I'll just leave the uh, USB plug uh, exposed so I'll be able to uh, recharge it and uh, then I'll be able to trigger it by tapping. So that is some of the very exciting uh, uh, future of, of our um, MP3 playback right inside of Circuit Python. Uh, I'll check here on, on the Discord to see uh, if we have any response about our pause thing I was asking about. See, Grover says, I think he added that to allow the REPL to interrupt instead of using while speaker playing pass. Okay. Uh, you need a little delay sometimes to allow the REPL to respond to a control C. Oh, okay. So that, that's just allowing us to interrupt the thing from, from uh, the REPL there while we're working. So we might not need that in practice uh, for the final project is my guess there. Uh, it is for waiting. All right. Uh, another question we saw here, Wolf220, does Adafruit make a speaker jack to headphone jack adapter? That would come in handy for live streams with audio. Uh, speaker jack to headphone jack. Oh, okay. So I see you're talking about essentially going line out from this into my mixer. That's a good question. Um, we could probably build that from parts. We don't have, I don't think we have anything that's that's directly that, but uh, that's certainly um, an interesting idea. And then you could hear, hear this in all of its loud glory. Uh, all right, so I think that's all that we've got time for today. And uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to be doing uh, another show and tell in a little bit. So if you want to show off a project, uh, check our blog on the Adafruit blog. I have some notes up there. Uh, I posted a little early, earlier. There'll be a post going up right at 2.30, uh, I think. Uh, my time, 5.30 Eastern time, about how to, uh, how to come on and show a project. We're using StreamYard, uh, so we can have, uh, I think, six people in the waiting room at a time, and if you want to get on and it's full, just wait and try again. After, after someone goes and leaves, you should be able to get in. Uh, and I believe that's it. Yeah, so thank you all again so much for stopping by. Uh, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate you uh, coming by and, and hanging out and looking at some projects. Uh, and I look forward to filling out some more of, of this MP3 playback project. But it's also really exciting uh, that we can do this at all now. Um, the files are really small, so you can fit a lot of them right under RAM. Or uh, I know Jeff also did some versions using SD cards. If you want to add on an SD card wing, you can, you can pack on tons and tons of MP3s that way. Uh, all right, that's all the time we've got for today. So I will thank you uh, again so much for stopping by. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been John Park's Workshop, and I will see you next time.